When the Spaniards arrived in the Americas, they found civilizations obsessed with the stars. One Spanish historian recorded that the Aztecs erupted into pure panic at the occurrence of an eclipse, crying out in fear, weeping uncontrollably, and offering captives as sacrifices to the gods. Only much later did archaeologists discover their impressive knowledge of the stars, which they often integrated into the architectural designs of their temples. El Caracol, for instance, at Chichen Itza, was a Maya observatory, which has its windows and various platforms pointing to the sun, the planets and the stars. And on the facade of the nunnery at Chichen Itza, the Mayans presented their zodiac, the path in the sky of the sun, the moon and the planets. And just as we do in the West, they also divided the zodiac into constellations. So we have a lot to discuss. Let's start. Hey, good to see you. This is Stefan, author of In Search of the Sublime. On this World History Channel, we'll trace humanity's relentless pursuit of scientific truth, moral excellence and enlightenment. We'll meet anyone from Mesopotamian astronomers and Indian yogis to Greek philosophers and enlightenment scientists. And you'll meet them firsthand using primary sources, giving you valuable insights that transcend the surface level understanding you get on other channels. Go check it out for yourself. Let's start. Most of the early civilizations, including Mesopotamia, Egypt and China, focused obsessively on the stars. This was also the case for the civilizations in the Americas, including the Mayas and the Aztecs. Their goal was not to understand the universe for its own sake, but instead to predict the will of the gods, mostly to learn how to prevent disaster. We know from the Aztecs, for instance, that they deeply feared eclipses. One Spanish friar was there when an eclipse occurred, and this is what he saw. There was tumult and disorder. All were disquieted, unnerved, frightened. And then there was weeping. There was shouting everywhere. People of light complexion were slain as sacrifices. Captives were killed. All offered their blood. They drew straws through the lobes of their ears, which had been pierced. And in all the temples there was the singing of fitting chants. There was an uproar. There were war cries. It was thus said, if the eclipse of the sun is complete, it will be dark forever. The demons of darkness will come down and they will eat men. As a result of these fears, both the Mayans and the Aztec kings hired professional astronomers to read the will of the gods from the stars. In one case, a king also joined in, the astronomer king Netzahualpili, the king of Texcoco near the Aztec capital. A Spanish historian wrote about this king. They say he was a great astrologer and prided himself much on his knowledge of the motions of the celestial bodies. He caused inquiries to be made throughout his dominion for all astronomers, who he brought to his court and imparted to them whatever he knew and ascended by night on the terraced roof of his palace. He thence considered the stars and disputed with them on all different questions connected with them. That must have been an interesting sight. Since the knowledge of the stars was considered divine, the Mayas also worked their astronomical knowledge into their architecture. The most noteworthy Mayan city in terms of astronomy is Chichen Itza, which flourished between 600 and 1200 AD. The temple of Kukul Khan, named after the feathered serpent god, has four stairs with each 91 steps. And if we add the shared final step on the top platform, this gives us 91 times 4 plus 1 is 365 steps, equal to the number of days in the year. And in the days surrounding the equinoxes, that is when day and night are of equal length, the pyramid creates a waving shadow that looks like the body of a serpent, whose head is actually found in stone at the base of the pyramid. Although some believe this is just a coincidence. El Caracol, also at Chichen Itza, has been identified as an observatory. The upper circular room has a number of windows which seem to be aligned to various stars. And the upper staircase is oriented to the setting of the sun on the day of the solar zenith, that is the day on which the sun passes straight overhead 
which happens twice a year in the tropics. The lower staircase is curiously out of alignment with the upper staircase, seemingly to make it line up with the northernmost position of Venus. And also, the main platform looks like a deformed square, with the diagonal forming a line on which the sun rises during the winter and the summer solstices. The nunnery at Chichen Itza depicts the Mayan zodiac. The zodiac is a band in the sky through which the sun, the moon and the planets all move, as you can see on this image. In the photograph here to the right, we see for instance four planets and also the sun which is just below the horizon now, and they're all situated on the same line, they're all in the same plane, and this plane is now called the ecliptic. And today we know that this ecliptic is actually the plane of our solar system. All the planets, including the Earth, revolve in a plane around the Sun. And this plane, the ecliptic, was called the zodiac by the ancients. The Mayans also divided their zodiac into different constellations. Our 12 constellations are derived from Mesopotamia and were later adopted by the Greeks and the Romans. And the Sun, the Moon and the planets move from one constellation to the next, along the zodiac. Here for instance we see the Moon and the planet Venus entering the twin constellation. Just like in Mesopotamia, the Mayan constellations were also mostly animals, just as we have a lion and a crab and so on. And they are seen on a lintel on the facade of the nunnery at Chichen Itza. The lintel itself represents the band of the Mayan zodiac and is presented here below. The first symbol that we see on the first row is actually not a constellation, but a planet. It is the symbol for Venus that we also see to the right. And if you look carefully, you see this image of Venus popping up across the lintel. Next to Venus, we see a peccary, then a lunar glyph, then the emix day glyph from the Mayan calendar. More on this, by the way, in my video on the Mayan calendar. And then a skull. On the second row, we see a bird, and then again, Venus. And now the last row, here we have a tortoise, a scorpion, a vulture, and finally, a serpent. Another Mayan zodiac can be found in the Paris Codex, which depicts the zodiac beautifully as the body of a serpent. Many animals in this version of the zodiac are different from the one at the nunnery, but both of them contain the constellations Tertus, Scorpion, Vulture and Serpent, and they are also presented in the same order. The Dresden Codex also shows parts of the zodiac on various pages. Here we see a part of the band of the zodiac, and underneath it we see an image representing a solar eclipse. And here we see again a piece of the band of the zodiac, and here we see the hanged moon goddess, representing a lunar eclipse. And finally, here we see the so-called Mars beast, also hanging from the zodiac. The Borgia Codex from central Mexico also seems to show the zodiac, here depicted as a white cord. Attached to the cord we see the moon glyph with a rabbit and the sun glyph with a peccary. This art is stunningly beautiful, as I hope you agree with. Other evidence of Mayan astronomy can be found at the governor's palace, at the Maya city of Uxmal. On the facade of the building, we see a number of eyes with underneath them the Venus glyph. These eyes point to another temple five kilometers away that marks the southernmost excursion of Venus in the sky. The Temple of the Sun at Palenque also shows an interesting solar alignment. During the summer solstice, right at sunrise, a very thin band of light enters the temple and hits the back corner of the room, as you can see here while during the rest of the year, the sunlight is fully blocked. Also in Mesoamerica, but outside of Maya territory, we have found three zenith passage tubes, which are vertical tubes that let through sunlight only when the sun is directly overhead, which only happens in the tropics. At the Zapotec city, Monte Alban, the tube starts in the middle of a staircase of a temple and goes down into a room below and the zenith tube at Xochicalco is located underground, as you can see here. 
And these are the highlights of the astronomical finds of the Mayan temples. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to know more about the Mayans or any other topic from world history, read my book In Search of the Sublime. You can read it on worldhistorybook.com or you can buy a physical copy on Amazon. See you next time. Bye-bye.